Well, um, hello and welcome to another episode of Frolics Comics Bollocks, uh, the show where um, myself, Nick, and himself. Smythington Worthington the Fourth. Mm -hmm. uh, talk all things sequential art. Yep. Uh, so, if you've been paying attention... Back to uh, your sweet pippy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you've been paying attention, a couple of um, episodes ago, I recommended that we read the first 10 episodes of, uh, episodes, sure, whatever, issues of um, The Savage Sword of Conan. Mm. And uh, as we talked about this at the end, Clive was kind of like, you know what? Uh, what this doesn't have is the amount of gratuitous TNA and hardcore violence <clears throat> that I really think it should have had. So, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> this, um, you being an open-minded fellow, mm. um, I thought to myself, now what, what is a comic book that I read as a teenager that did have uh, an almost excruciating amount of tits and ass and a reasonable amount of uh, blood and guts. And, and of I course, thought, Wizard and Chips. <laughs> that's the one, yeah, yeah. So what we're talking about this week is Wizard and Chips. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no. I wouldn't talk mind talking Wizard and Chips one day. Me neither. We'll, we'll get there, I think. Um, I'm very interested in talking about Oink, which you managed to source the entire the entire run of. Right. Um, yeah. 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 Um, but no, what we are in fact talking about is uh, this is just the cover of one of them, but this is the cover of uh, Creatura, um, one of the Druna books by uh, Paolo Elutri Serpieri, um, mm. who you can't guess is an Italian gentleman. Um, who what I love is he was uh, not only was he a, you know a comic. He was a, a, he was a painter originally, uh, and then at a certain point he segued uh, in his career into comics, mm. uh, mostly doing um, kind of Western comics. He has a style that is uh, is his own, I think. But you can see in the Western comics a little bit of Jean Giraud, um, uh, right? So you know, before well, Mobius. Sorry, when you say Western comics, you you mean as in I mean specifically as opposed to cowboys. Western. Yes, right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure Italian comics would still probably count as Western comics in that. But well, I was just making sure West. because uh, sometimes, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> so so are these? Sorry, just a, are these? Because I are these like in, um, are are these? And this is not something I know much mm -hmm. about. But is it in that a uh, post? Is it Blueberry, the French comic book? Is so it that's that's kind of post yes. Western yes. kind of? Yes. So, so you've got, you've got, exactly, yeah. So you've got, you've got Jean Giraud, right, uh, who does does his cowboy comics under that name, and then does his space comics under the Mobius name, right? Right. Because um, I, he, sorry, just to interrupt. I've been thinking about maybe doing the Blueberry yeah. comics at some point because uh, totally. I'm not very familiar with them, um, and and they seem to have been um, hugely important oh, yeah. at a certain point. I but. can look, and I can just look at Mobius's art all day without complaint i mean he's just a beautiful draftsman mm -hmm. and so this this when you know I, I when i looked at some of just i uh, took a quick look at some of um sir Pierre's earlier you know black and white uh cowboy comics definitely i could see a little bit of the same you know a lot of that kind of hatching and attention to detail and, and just uh um and his stories tended to center very much uh, often in characters who are indigenous as well and so he even says himself that at the beginning of druna He's still drawing her as though she is like an indigenous American woman. Mm. Mm. And then he slowly kind of moved away from that. Um, but at a certain point, he decided, you know what the world needs is um, is extremely uh, sex-filled uh, science fiction. Um, and he's, he's pretty upfront about his influences, which if you have, unless you've never seen a science fiction movie, um, you know, you, you'd recognize pretty quickly that he's a big fan of The Thing. Mm. and uh alien <laughs> um and a couple of other you know as as you you know uh, those influences are worn on the sleeve i think um but so i read these all as a teenager they were reprinted in heavy metal magazine mm. um and the the versions we read here are some of them are from the heavy metal magazines and some of them are from the the kind of bound volumes that that were oh. that came out later on go ahead so let's pause there a little bit because again, yeah. as much for me as 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 maybe anyone watching who doesn't know as well. So, 
so because I didn't, I kind of somehow managed to skip um, heavy metal. I've never even seen the yeah. animated film, surprisingly. Yes. So, which is, which is weird. Start off, from what I understand, it's it's Metal Irland, right? It's a French comic. Yes. And that yes. which runs, actually, the original metal doesn't seem to run that long or nowhere near as long as heavy metal comic. And yes. heavy metal comic started as reprints from Metal Irland and then yes. started doing its own thing, right? Yes. So but continue to reprint. Continue to re so if people were working in other countries producing uh, science fiction stories that were good, they would buy the rights to them. But right. but I would right. imagine that this was being published in Italy separately than its stuff. You know what I mean? In right. Italian, in Italian editions. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So 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 was Druna in Metal Orlant? Yeah. No, I don't think so. So, but it did turn up in 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 heavy the, metal. in the North American yeah heavy metal, and then yeah. so also the other thing I wonder about heavy metal was was it toned down or was it the entire uncensored like the the way it played in heavy metal is it the same as these collected graphic novels that we are reading or were they some because mm -hmm. I noticed even within these, like we mm -hmm. made a mix from whatever we mm -hmm. could source. Yeah, I did notice occasionally it got coy, like strategically placed word balloons that didn't connect anybody's mouth. Yes, saying, usually oh. over cocks, right, being sucked basically. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So is that the is that the heavy metal version? Yes. Is it okay? All right. And and would that have been as standard in heavy metal? Like you wouldn't have had any erect penises and things. That like. was standard in everything uh at a certain point uh, it is specifically contact right so so in it, i remember very clearly when um it kind of like you know penthouse magazine basically at a certain point in the 1990s suddenly started publishing you know actual pornography like of the you know the total kind right um and it was it was kind of a it had always been banned it was the kind of stuff you could only buy in store specific so they were not on newsstands right right but at that point and so heavy metal was the same heavy metal was a magazine you bought it at magazine shops and you could get it at comic book stores weirdly it was sold to 14 year old boys which is funny to me now to think because when i was rereading this i was like oh, this is pretty full on to just like hand over to somebody who is not who's a kid mm. you know um even with the strategic place balloons it's still pretty you know Oh yeah, definitely. Um, well, certainly compared to other stuff you would have found on North American shelves, right? I mean, mm -hmm. um, but I remember seeing. I think I saw Druna originally when I was moving to Canada. So when I was when I was moving, I was in. We went. We flew through Amsterdam, and I was in the uh, magazine shop in the Amsterdam airport as we were changing planes uh, to come to Canada, and I saw a copy of uh, 1989 issue of Heavy Metal. Picked it up, was leafing through it, and there was. Druna in all of her glory. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, 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 I just coming out of Holy Catholic Ireland, like, what's happening? What is <laughs> I'm this? I'm frightened. I want to go back. <laughs> like, you know, I wouldn't have had the, the even the courage or whatever to, you know, to try to buy it there. But then within a year or two, being in Canada, it was like, you could get heavy metal everywhere. You could get it at the comic book store. You could get it in. So, and nobody, they didn't have an 18 plus thing on it. There was nothing that said you couldn't buy it if you were 15. Right. So it's funny, actually, it is one of those things. It's one of those things. I'm surprised there was never, you know, because um, at a certain point, the censorious always jump on these things like, you know, uh, lyrics in rap albums, okay. and things like that. And I'm surprised heavy metal, as far as I know, kind of managed to survive pretty much unscathed. Right. I mean, I don't know. Ooh, I was under the radar. Up, actually, I was kind of surprised how long running. Like it only finished. Like. This year or last year, they're like yeah. every metal had a pretty long run, and um, I don't know if at any point, because I think most people think tend to think of it as an eighties or nineties phenomenon, in the same way as people tend to forget that two thousand eight D is still running, right? Um, but right. but I wonder, did it start to self censor at a certain point? Did it start to like okay, we've had a good long run, uh. We should probably turn it down now before someone forces it to, or, or was it still like up until when it 
finished, was it still pretty full on, or was it still reprinting I mean, stuff from Europe in its uncensored glory? Or that's a great question. I don't know, um, okay. but it did. So certain things that were really exciting for me, uh, again as a teenager, was being able to see Slain the Horn God republished in heavy metal. You know, oh, it was. It, that's it, interesting. I mean, it makes sense. It would. It belongs in that company. Right? I can see <laughs> that. I can see that. Um, and so there would be other Bisley stuff. So it wasn't just, yeah. So, I mean, it was, it was, and there were, they would have sometimes uh, American more sort of underground or more, you know, edgy uh, stories and stuff as well. Um, mm. I quite liked it actually in the 80s. The night By the 90s, it had gotten very like, it was just comics. But in the 80s, it was more of a magazine. So you'd have like a three page article on like, uh, you know, Philip K. Dick, or then you'd have like articles on, uh, interesting movie makers of the time. I remember there was one about like the, um, was it Just Jaken or whatever his name was, who adapted some of the Milo Manara stuff, you know, into yeah, films. Yeah, the Emmanuel guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so it was things like, things like that. Um, well, he yeah, did the, it, um, he did the, um, Gwendolyn. Film. Yeah, yeah, Perils of Gwendolyn. Yeah, there was all, there was like a four page article on the Perils of Gwendolyn. That was right? it. I can see that. Um, uh, and then I'm keen to rewatch actually. Um, yeah, I seem to mm -hmm. be enjoying that. Um, and so yeah, again, as, as like a 15 year old, you know, boy just being like, This is this is awesome. And then also, they'd have like one page things that were more just funny or they were more like in line with Zap comics or something, you know. Right. So it was more of a catch all and it wasn't so just science fiction. Um, it was just more like edgy, interesting, fun, strange comics. And then by the nineties, it would it, they had really gone the route. No, we are a science fiction comics right. magazine, right? And I found that less fun, less right. interesting. Do you know if it did actually? Because because you mentioned getting to Canada and and seeing it, and I'm wondering. I mean, I think I may have seen the odd stray copy now and again, but I just don't. I think one of the reasons I didn't read it, I don't remember really seeing it about on British news agent shelves so i'm wondering how much well i don't think mary whitehouse would have approved um no absolutely but the, but but again it's possible that it could have flown under it because it clearly it did in north america right? but I, hmm. i'm wondering if there was any reason because like you said i was you know there was stuff turned up and in it like slain and i'm sure it was known among comics fans everywhere and i certainly have heard i've always heard of it i just mm -hmm. I don't think it was ever like put right in front of my eyes, which is why I never. Because I'm pretty sure if I would have seen if heavy metal was about, I mean, I find it very hard to believe I wouldn't have picked up a copy randomly at some point. And if I had, I'm pretty sure I would have. Oh, what's the especially if Drew knows in there. So, yes. so I'm wondering, I'm wondering if 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 it just didn't get much circulation in the UK or not. So. I mean, when I, you know, I grew up in a small town, uh, you know, Ireland, as you know. Um, so we've talked about this before when we've talked about comics. Like my only, my only access to comics was not through specialist shops. There was no comic store. Oh, in, no, 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 no. There was no yeah. Forbidden Planet. If, right. You know, if you want that, you have to go up to Dublin, right? Um, so it was just, it was whatever they had at the news agents. Um, when I moved to Canada, the city was big enough that it had two or three standalone comic book shops. Mm. And so it was in there that I went in and they would have the stacks, right? The long boxes with back issues. Right. And that's where I filled in. That's where I got all of those eighties issues of heavy metal. I would go there and I would go through and I'd always be like, is this the day they're going to ask me if I'm old enough to be buying these? <laughs> and then bring them up and, right. them and bring them home. And, um, the next yeah, so, come down. No. Um, so, so yeah, so it's funny, like, but if, if you're talking about classic, heavy metal like what if you, somebody was going to say like what is the classic heavy metal uh story it's nothing i don't think it's any i, I mean you okay richard corbin's stuff like den hmm. that springs to mind right and and actually in the interviews in this um in one of the books that we read there's there's actually a bunch of text interviews or or writing by Ser, serpieri he does say corbin was one of the influences too because corbin drew solid women they weren't the kind of willowy right modigliani types that were in a lot of like the you know and he said you know he just he's not running down my Luminara or um 
crap hacks to those guys but he's just like i wanted a solidly built woman like and he was like the only person doing that was corbin so um, to take the punishment basically yes um and so uh he so yeah but i honestly think that most people if they think of heavy metal at all nowadays think of druna i think i think every time he had a new book out it was like on the front cover. It was like, oh yeah, oh my God, she's back! Like, <laughs> thank Christ! <laughs> right, right. Get your right. hand, you know, get your right hand ready, boys. Left hand for turning pages. Um, mm. And uh, there was something hilarious about the way that, yeah, there was such great excitement every time a new volume of the book. Despite the fact that, as we'll talk about in a second, the story is fucking shite. What's happening? Who cares? It's a is it a dream within a computer yeah. program, within a nightmare, within a dream, within a... It's just so... And the dialogue is out. I mean, I know it's been translated, but, like, could you not have tried a little harder to make something that's anything like anyone has ever said when speaking right. to another human being? Um, it's... Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, but, it's like, it's, on the other hand, it's not us. I mean... Yes. Yeah, so that is... I mean, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so let's get to it. Shall we get to Drew? Yeah. Okay, so I was going to, I'll say one more thing about um, about Sir Pierre. So apparently he started out as a painter, um, like a proper I classically trained that. painter. And I, I think that's... that really comes yeah. through. His stuff looks like, what if like Michelangelo was just a total perv <laughs> and not gay, basically, right? Right. Um, right. Like, there's this, there's a look about this, this Renaissance look about, and this total understanding of anatomy that's put oh, to yeah. the best possible uses. Oh, yes. Um, and, you know, the draftsmanship, the, like, the buildings, it's all just so beautifully oh, rendered. it's amazing. It really is uh, amazing. Um, and, and yet, at the, basically, it's, it's porn with a plot, right? And that plot is pretty, pretty weird and rickety and very transcendental. And um, Well, I'm always impressed to see any really, 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 really well-drawn um, pornographic comics. Because I just said, I, I, I'm always amazed, like, how do you like how do you put off the urge to just wank and actually get the comic finished? Well, I don't think that he does. I think he's really clear in those interviews that like that's a part of the process. Okay. You right. know, or the or like it was like his version of edging somehow, like the to draw right. to like uh, right. I can get, get I can get and... twelve panels done <laughs> and then I just have to go and release and then come back and yeah, I suppose. I mean, I, I, I certainly make sense. To, that's the only way I can imagine. Um, I, I wouldn't be able to. I mean, I can't draw, but if I could, I mean, yeah, it would, it would, it would, it would take a lot of um, self discipline to to mm -hmm. get through to um, create a, a sixty two page story. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but, so, uh, so Paolo Eleuterio Serpieri. Um, other than the westerns and Druna, um, that's they, pretty much. Uh, it. Okay, I was wondering if there was, I'm kind of interested if there's any more of that. Um. <laughs> um, but so he, what's interesting is, so he had a day, he had a day job as well. This was part, only part of what he did. He was um, a, a professor at like the Rome Institute of the Arts, which I also love the idea of like your drawing teacher is is Sir Pieri. Like who was. Who's modeling for the life class today? Oh my God, please <laughs> let it be whoever it is. Because it's pretty clear to me that he must have had a live model at some point that he was photographing or because she is so consistent across the volumes. You right. know. Well, apparently um, uh, the original, the inspiration was the actress uh, Valerie yes. Kaprisky yes. in uh, Zlavsky's film, right? Uh, La Femme Publique, uh, which yes. I've not seen, but it's, shot straight to the top of my yeah, head. It's, it's on my radar now too, I have to say. <laughs> um, Zalowski <laughs> is someone I don't know much about other than um, Possession, Possession and mm -hmm. um, On the Silver Globe, right? Um, although both fascinating in their ways. So certainly a filmmaker I, I need to um, see more by. But but that, that film as well is kind of um, a semi or there's there, there's something to do with Dostoevsky's demons in there, isn't there? Part yeah, it is. Apparently, it is a, it's a sort yeah. of an adapt loose adaptation. Yeah. Um, um, but but, but so, very so, much yes. the toilet la femme public as I think, as it you know as in public toilet public mm -hmm. woman. I, I get the feeling mm -hmm. from um, from 
from what I've read about it. Um, but yeah, but so apparently she's she's the main uh, inspiration for yeah. for Drew. Mr. Ron, I'm going to show you one of the like I'm like I was struggling to find a page that I could potentially show on the show, but just to give you a sense of the um just the level of detail and yeah. drawing a draftsmanship. Um, I don't so, ask in that, Nick. What are you doing? No, that's, I, I, I was totally yeah, okay. selling it wrong. Um, I'm sure you could free. show you could show an ass. Good you? A, a cheek or two. That'll probably be okay. Fine. Well, I'll, I'll see what I can find here. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go. Um, I wanted to go into the the one where it, he has. It is his... one of those things, doesn't it? I was thinking because you do wonder if anyone's ever made any attempt to mount some sort of live action version of this, and of course, your mind goes to casting, right? Like, who would you? Mm -hmm. would who's, you your, get? who's your who's your dream casting for, who for would this? You get Drew, I I think you would have to be an unknown. I think you would have to be. You know, I I can't think of anyone. Who would certain, you know, somebody now, now. You again, like if you can pluck people out of time, if that's not right. a concern, right? Um, the 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 girl from uh, Della Morte, Della More. Um, ah, right, 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 right. Yes, I see. She made a she had very a, strong, and, she, and she's Italian. And she made a very strong impression upon me also in my teenage years. As, yeah. uh, as like, whew. Um, yeah, anyway, somebody like that. Anyway. Are you, do you want to attempt doing the... I'm going to leave this to you as your choice so I can I can get away with it. Uh, you you do it. Take, what's the plot of Truda? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, the plot. Yes. Uh, um, so it begins um the first book is called or the first two books are basically called morbus gravis and basically all the books that come after in some way or another are reimaginings or retreads of that first uh, arc or that first story so basically druna is a, a young lady who does not wear much kind of a um a, i'll do uh, this every now and again just to replicate the reading experience there you go yep <laughs> she wears that kind of a a, a floss bikini bottom and like a cut off t-shirt when when she's wearing clothes at all mm -hmm. um she has a boyfriend called shastar who seems to have been infected with some sort of uh mutational i don't know what the disease. deal with him is uh, um yeah kind of unclear uh but she really loves him but he's turning into some sort of like hideous thing monster creature it almost um, it, it almost becomes farcical actually the when he keeps Oh, you know, reappearing yeah, in different yeah. forms. Oh, it's you, Shasta! Oh, Shasta! Yeah. I started to laugh. I made this realization because then it started showing up in the movies, the Italian films. Italy, like the word absurd must be used an enormous <coughs> amount. Whatever the Italian word for absurd is must be used an enormous amount because everything is constantly absurd to everyone in this. This is how absurd. This is absurd. And then no matter what, no matter how bad it is, like, this group of troglodyte men are clearly going to have their way with me using that cattle prod. How absurd. Um, uh, you know, which is, a, but then I started noticing it. It showed up in multiple ones of the Lindsay films that we watched for a different show where we're watching films by an Italian director. And I was like, they really use the word absurd a lot. Hmm. Italian. I don't, anyway. Or um, it's, or there's certain words that just, there's no particularly good translation or something. That right. I, quite nail um you know right um but in any case so so shastar is her boyfriend he's he's sick with something she's been going and having sex with this sketchy doctor uh in order to get um mm -hmm, in I order to get every now and again just to replicate yeah. the experience mm -hmm. yeah because this to is quite medicine. dry your version oh yeah sorry yeah yeah no yeah. i'm just i'm just i'm just giving the outlines you could fill in yeah. the blanks yourself so yeah she's been going to this doctor who is very much into um backdoor action um, has a variety of contraptions he likes to use on Fort Yeah, Drina. still not Drina quite is, sure what's in that box of his. He's um well, I mean, so Druna is basically like uh like sex candide. She's just kind of wanders like kind of slightly confused from situation to situation where another monster or group of uh zombie things or whatever are about to uh, shag her, and she she does a lot of like, oh my god. I mean, it's like, it's like... She's like the SF version of Candy, right? Um, yes, totally. Yeah. Yeah, and I, yeah, exactly. That's exactly who she is. That um, would actually be be pretty good casting. They were all in. Uh, yes. Except she's slightly diff because Druna is obviously a bit more of a, um, I think she has to be raven-haired, I think, as yes. opposed to 
blonde because that's a slightly different I vibe know, for me. Yeah. Anyway, I, mean, I might just be thinking with my it's cock, a but it's slightly different. It's a... Yeah, she's a strapping lass. Uh, yeah. You know, she's uh, she's well built, is Druna. So, um, well, yeah. So basically, the built in, she's got the built-in buffer spots, right? To to mm. to make sure mm -hmm. she doesn't just snap. Um, yeah. So, um, I'm glad, I'm glad you enjoyed this, Clive. I'm glad that I'm glad when I was, <laughs> of I was thinking of you. I enjoyed this. You I knew thinking, I would enjoy this. You I was thinking of you. This for me. I did. When I did, your so hand I... wasn't busy doing something else. But mm -hmm. although, but you are quite right. So yeah. So I mean, just to, I mean, that is a valiant attempt. I, mean, I yeah. can go. I can go quickly through it. So basically, right. this disease is ravaging these people in this kind of collapsing industrial wasteland of a city. Uh, there are some sort of robot type of dudes who are like kind of a police force. Uh, people are getting shot for having this disease. Druna basically eventually but discovers there, there's even like a public moral squad, right? That brings yes. orgies and things. Um, yes, yeah. So the whole world is a it's what you know, it's what it's called a crap sack world, right? It's one of these SF dystopian societies, but eventually it turns out like full, epic of, money. Um, full of kibble as well, isn't it? It's yeah, oh, yes. I was thinking of that the whole time. It's just got this dense just... accumulations of kibble, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so eventually she blunders in from one sexual encounter to another into realizing that um they're not on they're not in a big city or on a planet at all. They're inside a massive spaceship, um, which is in deep space, and they've basically they're like the last remnants of the human race, and the ship is being run by the downloaded consciousness of its original captain, who's now basically a cyborgy thing with a bunch of plugins in his head, and he's kind of he's going to pieces and and he's the only thing that's been holding us all together so it's going to pieces because he's going to pieces he wants to commit suicide he calls upon druna to help him commit suicide but then he's like god damn she's hot whoa maybe there is a reason to live and um and that's kind of the end of the first book and everything after that is just more more <laughs> malarkey yeah, that's the thing that is the first volume and then you've got another nine volumes of Basically the same thing. It's the same cycle yeah. again and again. She meets that Sastra, Fash, what's the, the fuck his guy is. Yeah, and then there's star, another yeah. astronaut character. There's like a, there's a black character. He's in it quite mm -hmm. a bit and he seems plugged mm -hmm. into it. And and then there's a another Druna and there's there might be a mirror world. And then she what what I found is quite interesting is the consistency as well of you've got to hand it to him. Like when she keeps coming back to the city and to like where her houses and stuff he did at least go to the trouble of you actually and uh, if you think about this in the context of it's just this dystopian kind of rubble and shit whenever she gets back to near her home like they're very recognizable corridors and doors and like yeah. he's actually gone to the pro trouble oh, drafting it all it again. yeah so oh yeah so it's interesting it's one of those things it is massively repetitive it's an insanely mm -hmm. repetitive mm -hmm. um, especially if you read them all in a short space of time yeah but she is so fucking hot and everything <laughs> on this planet or in this world or whatever basically wants to fuck her and, mm -hmm. and does and mostly and, succeeds yeah yes and also she's not really complaining too much about no, it. i mean no, she seems uh, very easygoing about it all yeah she's very into most of the um, she she's either instigating it or she she starts being raped and then she's like God damn I love this and there's a certain mm -hmm. amount of SM comes into it as well which is good and so but even even for a massive perv like myself I mean if I could be a, yeah it, it is it is massively repetitive but what <laughs> I was going to say about it um, is I don't think it's lazy I feel as if inside Serpieri's head. I I think for him somehow, it's a legitimate working through of something. It felt like to me, as mm -hmm. opposed to someone. I don't think it's someone running out of ideas. It's oh, it is a man obsessing about something over and over oh, and yeah. over, and over again. No, it's a bit like that G that Jess Franco thing of like yes. you know, it's yes. comics as jazz. Like I'm going to keep revisiting these themes, but I'm going to give a different exactly. angle. This one. I'm going to go balls to the wall and give yeah. you stuff. You like the one, I think, is it Mandragora is the one where she goes into some sort of like brothel situ orgy situation and she's like, there's just some, and then all the guys get the cores around the necks at the end and it's like, and it's fully 
hardcore. There's no, yeah. there's no nothing. That section is just off the wall crazy. And and as well, it, it really replicates that kind of Victorian kind of compartmentalization of and now I am at home with my family and everything, you know, and then suddenly, you know, you're going down the greasy roll of depravity because it, it's, feel, it's like, okay, oh, whew, we've had that, uh, we've had an awesome scene with Drew and I have knocked on her, right, okay, I go back to drawing this story now and we have a bit of science fiction stuff for a while and then, oh, that drew, oh, she's a bit of a like six pages <laughs> since we last saw Druna's, yes. you know, getting abused. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, look at her bending over that. I know. Uh, okay. Yeah, fuck it. I'm going to have to throw it. Here comes another alien <laughs> thing to take care and, and it's just, yeah. So I, 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 I kind of admire its commitment to it. I mean, I, I do not doubt Sir Pieri's, um, um, What's the word? The, the, the it feels very authentic. It feels very authentic, and I I did enjoy reading it. It did mm -hmm. massively turn me on, and 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 the action alien monster stuff's good too. Like I know some of that stuff's awesome. It is. Like, it is, this is, it weird. is like John Carpenter and and like you know Ridley Scott. It's just together. probably gross. It's it's it's, it's, like, it's like all these th they they seem like some kind of weird mix between like. Like, yeah, some something Lovecraftian and and like yeah. and pizza or something like <laughs> yes, being stretched yeah. out over everything and yeah, it's yeah, yeah. horrible and the coloring of it is just and then yeah so so I I don't know it it really hits you on a on a base level I think it hits you in the oh, yes. gut. it hits you below the gut. Base is the word. Is the word. So can yeah. I just read to you then from my favorite part of the whole? So at the very end of the um, <laughs> at the very end of the at uh, the end of one of the books, this is this is uh, he's really going to sum up his feelings about art here for us. <laughs> so this is this is uh, in the words of the great Paolo uh, Elutri Serpieri. A woman's face is, of course, her most important feature, but I'm really obsessed with seeing a woman from the back. To me, it's absolutely necessary. I look for prominent butts. I hate it when they're small and flat. I don't consider small ass women beautiful, although they may be very pleasant company. So I often draw Druna viewed from the back. This is to give the impression that she's going towards a world that's coming at her. This has to be, without a doubt, the most sensual representation of a woman. A woman is really naked when you see her in the three quarter profile. Viewed from the front, yes, you can see her breasts, her belly and her pubis, but something seems to be missing. But when she is viewed in three-quarter profile from the back, with her eyes tilted towards you, it is as if she were inviting carnal contact. It is almost fetishistic. No, no, Paolo. It's definitely <laughs> it is, for you. Fetishistic. Yeah. It is almost fetishistic. I, I feel that the form of a beautiful butt is very positive, like life, like a smile. I have sincere admiration for that kind of beauty in a woman. And in my experience, these women are kinder, gentler, more positive, and more affectionate. Wow. Paolo, have you met my good friend Tinto Brass? <laughs> I mean, that seems like the match made in heaven that never happened. It was the Tinto oh, Brass. Yeah. Tinto Brass's Druna? Uh, Why did with, that with the with the budget of Caligula? Yep. That would be one for the end. Can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, I'm I'm glad. I'm glad that this that this uh yeah, I had a feeling when I, she, I said Druna came to mind so when we were we just finished the Red Sonia stuff. And you were like, nope, not not enough. I need more. And then well, I was like, I, I just feel I actually kind of feel lucky that I was exposed to it at the age of forty four. Because I think if I'd ever been exposed to it at the age you were, I probably right. wouldn't be here now. I would have just whacked myself <laughs> into a pool. Uh, it's just so. Yeah, maybe so that's that's, that's, two, that's 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 a strong endorsement from Clive there. If if your main interest in comics is uh, yeah. is women looking coyly over their shoulder at you, uh, showing you their butts, um, mm. this is the series. Uh, yeah. this is the series for you. You will but not be disappointed. In all seriousness, though, it is actually a fucking. It is a, a work of. It is it is an extraordinarily, uh, amazingly drawn. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he, that's why. That's why, as I said, that's why every time a new book came out in Italy, yeah. fans were already like, "When is it coming? When is heavy metal gonna reprint this?" <laughs> and then 
Yeah, and I get it because it, in a way as well, I think if you were reading a new volume every few years as opposed to reading them all compressed into a week like I did, um, then oh, yeah. the was was would probably have been more tolerable. Right. Um, yeah, it was. Never, I don't think it was ever intended to be read the way. No, that no, we no, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, yeah. So, um, no, no, absolutely. I mean, uh, I'm, yeah, no, uh, a, a definite. Um, thumbs up if your thumbs okay. up too busy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, so there you go. If if you think that um that Druna might be your slice of peach, then you should uh you should check check her out. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Right. Okay. Let us let us stop now. Yeah. Let's let's finish there. Okay. We're so, ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, right. Take care. See you then, uh, folks. We'll, uh, we'll see you again. Enough, oddly enough, looking ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, it's my choice next, and mine so much more wholesome than Nick's. Who'd have thought it? <laughs> Great, it's, it's the wine growing one, right? Oh yes, yeah. yes, yeah. No, weird, Clyde. Yeah, we're yeah. we're we're clearly in the mirror universe right now. <laughs> um, I should have shown up with a goatee this episode. Um, all right. right. See, See you next time on right. Frolics Comics Bollocks. <laughs> oh. Mm. doesn't have quite the same that's, effect live actually. no and anyway that's for <laughs> patreon uh <laughs> okay right that's your only fans account